Hello friends, we are at a crucial time in supporting Tottenham Hotspur. Yes, I know I'm being dramatic, but I really do think this is a big occasion that we've witnessed yesterday. Um, a lot of talk is going around, uh, is this the worst performance we've seen under Jose Mourinho? Uh, is this the worst performance since the Pochettino era? Uh, should Jose get sacked? You know, all the difficult questions. I believe that uh, this is actually a very crucial time for Tottenham Hotspur, as I've mentioned. Um, I, I want to I wanna just take a moment. I didn't record um, after the match directly yesterday because I was in a mood, as I'm sure many Tottenham Hotspur fans were. Um, yeah, I think the match yesterday is a um, pretty big shift in the perspective of what's going on at Tottenham Hotspur, and uh, I am worried as to where we go from here, to say the least. So, let's just analyze this game for a second, right? Um, so, we started with a back three of Joe Roden, Toby Alderweireld, Davidson Sanchez as the center backs, um... You know, it's weird seeing Davinson back in the team. It's weird seeing Toby back in the team. It's weird not seeing Eric Dyer. He's pretty much starred every single Premier League match uh, since the beginning of the season. So, very weird. Suzoko as a wing back. Um, ben Davis as the left back. Uh, really, you have no other choice there. Maybe Jaffa Tanganga. Uh, Tongi and Dombele and Hoybier in the midfield. You got Bale on the right wing because that's the only place he wants to play. Youngman's son up top, Steven Bergvine on the left. Okay. So, um, really, what was the plan here? That's what I want to analyze. What was the plan? What was the game plan for this game? I really don't know. That's the problem, right? Um, so we, 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 <laughs> we hit long balls. Uh, Mr. Hugo here would continually, um, just, you know, well, let me see if I can get a brush here. Uh, yeah, rasterize this. Right, so let's say this is the ball. This is the soccer ball. He would continually just pump it up to Sun. Or Toby would do something similar. Right? You would just see this throughout most of the game. How do I get back? Okay, no more brush tool. Okay, wonderful. So, yeah, the, we would see that very, very common. Um, did Tongi and Dombele touch the ball? A lot. Not really. Um, he did. He tried doing things. But what you would see is he would most often be just occupied in, like, these spaces spaces back here. There was really no escape for him. He was being triple teamed most of the night, so uh, you can excuse him. Hoybier, there was a problem where uh, basically the midfield seemed to be kind of up here most of the game uh, because it really just seemed like two separate blocks. You had the attacking five, <laughs> and and then the defensive line. And if you just look at uh, what this defensive line is right here, it's uh, you wonder why we trusted this. Um, am I going to say Eric Dyer was missed? No, because I, I, I genuinely think, you know, the, the problem wasn't just one defender. Um, yeah. But mainly, the problem was, there was just so much space in here, like, right in here. So, you know, the strong midfield of Brighton could just be like, oh, hey, I see a friend over here, let's pass it over there. And then, oh, you see this guy making a run through here? Oh, I'm just going to play that ball right through there. Oh, and look, he shot and he has scored. Okay. I mean, it, it, you know, I'm simplifying here. 
But, I mean, if when you have a strong midfield like Brian does, that's pretty much the only thing going for them this season. Uh, you wonder why we let that happen. So, what would I have done differently? Uh, I will tell you. So, basically... You get you get him out here. You, <laughs> I I am sorry. You get you get Davinson out of here. Uh, let me take this, and you you do this right. Maybe uh, you. Here's the thing: who plays in the ten? Uh, you would really want to see Deli Ali, maybe, but really Tongi plays there, um, or or you get. Um, Deli Ali to play in the 10, but that's not going to happen, uh, really. But, uh, I mean, I just wanted to see a 4-2-3-1 possession-based system. And then maybe here you get, let's see, um, da -da -da -da, maybe Harry Winks. Harry Winks to come in and be the best man. That's what you want to see. I cannot find him right now, but that's okay. Um... But yeah, you get Harry Winks to come in and do the business in that little midfield space. That would be great. Uh, just for possession. Because really, it was just, as I mentioned, you see these people get the ball. And then you see them just punt it long to Sun's noggin. To, Kane, to Bale's noggin. To Bergvine's noggin. And really, that seemed to be our only form of attack. And that is the problem I have with Mourinho. So, uh, let's go back to this here. Um, I, I, I just... You know, this is a problem. He's played there before, but really... I mean, he wasn't the, he wasn't the worst player yesterday. Maybe he's our best right back. But really... When you have the problem of not having fit wing backs, why use a system that probably has your most conservative uh, left back or, you know, left sided winger? And why use your another conservative wing back? You don't have any wing backs, so why use wing backs? I, I don't understand. Anyways. That was weird, especially because we look to create from the wings, but most often, you know, you would see uh, Ben Davis go up. He would look around. He would be, he would be like, okay, I uh, I have the ball. Uh, let's uh, let's look for a passing option. Oh look, Tongi and Domble is being marked by like fifteen people up here. Uh, Hoybier is showing for the ball, but he's on the other side of the pitch. So let me just, uh, let's see here. Go back to Joe Roden, who gives it back to Toby, who gives it back to Hugo because of pressing. And then Hugo just hits it long. <laughs> and that's, that's what happened. And again, you wonder where the game plan was here. Um, and again, that's my problem with what was happening. Um... Oh, God, what am I doing? Here we go. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, and really, th this is bigger than just having no game plan. It was more just looking at the pitch and being like, uh, where's the motivation? Where's, you know, where has Jose lost the dressing room? Uh, do we have a coherent plan going forward? Jose has been in charge for... 14 months and you know I'll just give you my honest opinion as a fan here I was optimistic I really I'm gonna be honest I haven't been the like most adamant watcher of Jose's career and um I you know I could buy into the narrative that he had a rough time at Manchester United and things just didn't work out there for many reasons and I could also buy that, uh, you know, he was being asked a lot of at big clubs like Chelsea and Real Madrid, and they didn't give him enough time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I really did buy that. But, um, you know, after 14 months, I really wanted to see 
a better game plan without Kane because it was going to be a very real possibility than hitting long balls to Sutton. I I mean, I'm sorry. I just don't want to watch that for 90 minutes. Um, You have to. I could understand playing Sun as a striker under Pochettino in a possession-based system where, you know, you have an interchanging front four uh, who can drift into space and rotate and and then you play short passes, intricate passes in between each other. And, you know, look at Manchester City. They don't have a functioning striker, but they're working because they can do that. Kevin freaking De Bruyne played as a striker and it worked. Uh, freaking Ilkay Gundogan is playing <laughs> as like an auxiliary striker. You can do it. But Jose, Jose, I don't know if he can do it. He seems to only know that one way of playing. And it's weird how the one way of playing didn't involve your only natural striker other than Kane. Uh, Yeah, he's probably not, like, you know, at the level that other people were expecting. Maybe there's a communication issue. Maybe there's a lot of things uh, going on with Venetius. But at the end of the day, you just needed someone to occupy the space and link up play. And uh, really, uh, yeah, he did come on and didn't do much. Got shot off to his credit. But, I mean, why he didn't start is beyond me. You need a focal point. Sun works best off of a focal point. Um, Bergvine does as well. Bale does as well. I mean, and it's just kind of weird. We seem to operate under a series of ideas of play. Oh, we're going to press high. We're going to, um, we're going to fight back for the ball hard. We're going to be direct, be be strong in attack, and go forward and be progressive and. But those are just ideas. The When you look at it, there's no real function to how we get there. Um, and that's my problem. Even when Venetius came on, there wasn't a clear plan as to how to get the ball to him, how to link up play. It was just kind of hectic. And you saw people panicking. You saw the whole team panicking. Um... When the when Bryden had the ball, it was yeah yeah Bryden are a good team and um, I I do I am sympathetic to the opinion that there's no real bad team in the Premier League, but that was just an abject performance. Uh, we can beat Bryden. Um, here's here's my problem. We have a world class center midfielder in Tongi and Dombele. Was he used to his potential yesterday? No. We have a very, very serviceable and very effective defensive midfielder in Pierre-Emil Hoiberg. Was he used to his full, est- to his full extent yesterday? No. Uh, we have an aging but still effective creative winger and Gareth Bale, was he used his full effectiveness yesterday? No. We have a world-class attacking talent that loves drifting in from the left and getting in behind defenses. Was he used to his best extent yesterday? No. Uh, we have a very, very promising young winger who is creative, can do flicks, can create, has a brilliant first touch, is a great runner. Was he used to his full extent yesterday? Absolutely not. We have a great defensive left back who can do a serviceable job in the back four in getting the ball out of defense. Was he used to his full extent yesterday? Absolutely not. We have Joe Roden, promising young defender uh, who is really front-footed and will try his best um, but is still not the complete article. Was he used to his full extent yesterday? Was he asked too much of yesterday? Yes. So I'm going to say he wasn't used effectively. Toby Alderweireld, great ball playing center back. I think that in itself speaks to how he wasn't used effectively yesterday. 
uh, Davinson Sanchez, out of form center back who was clumsy on the ball and could not really progress it that much. Was he used to his full effectiveness? Absolutely not. Suzoko, who is a serviceable box to box midfielder, great at uh, counter attacking. Uh, and terrible with the ball as feet was he used to his full effectiveness yesterday. No. So, that's my problem. <laughs> um, I don't think anyone was used to their full effectiveness yesterday. There is a way to create, to use this team with brilliant players and get more out of them. And I'm not going to say Pep Guardiola is like the best manager of um, our lifetime. He might be. He very possibly is. But with this team, you wonder just how much more we could be doing with these talents. They're good players. They are top four players. And I would argue this season, they should be challenging for the Premier League title you know, in the context of what everyone else is dealing with in the Premier League. So, am I mad at Jose? Yeah. Um, do I also appreciate that a few months ago or two months ago, we were on top of the league and everything looked to be going well, and I really did think Jose turned a corner? I also appreciate that. But it's it's more just the feeling in the dressing room. Um, I want to see people fighting. I want to see uh, the team being used properly. I want to see people not be frozen out. I want to see progressive play. I want to not be sitting back against Brighton looking scared of the ball. I want to see... Tongi and Domble do great things. I want to see Hyungman Sun do great things. I want to see us stop relying on individual brilliance and have a more coherent plan and attack. And after 14 months, we don't have that. And that's why I'm mad. And I'm very open, right? If Jose finds a way to somehow combat this and build a team... Uh, involving Venetius, involving, you know, whatever philosophy he wants to implement, great, I'm all for it. But right now, I am scared <laughs> for the future. And I think we're at a pivotal moment in our Tottenham Hotspur supporting career where I think we have to see how risky Levy wants to be. And if things keep going this way, um, I do, I, I just wonder where we go. Jose Mourinho is the top paid manager in the Premier League, and it would be very rough to sack him. I don't think we'll sack him unless things get really, really bad. I mean, like, going on a run of, like, six games lost or something. Are we still in the top six? Yeah, um, with a game in hand. Um, am I overreacting a little bit? Maybe, but this has been a routine thing where we just fall back. So maybe I'm not. Um, yeah, that, I mean, we've had very, very suspect performances before and we've kind of bounced back, but still, I, I don't think this team is living up to its full potential and that's my problem. Uh, and I... I just wonder if this experiment is going to end well. And yeah, on the whole of it, we're in all competitions. We're we're doing okay in the league. But again, based on how everyone else has had problems and stuff, you wonder if we could do better. And I think we could. And that's my problem. And I wonder if other supporters... Feel that way, and I would love to hear your thoughts. I am not the I am not the Messiah. I am not you know the be all end all uh, voice for all people, but I'm I'm frustrated as a fan because I really do feel like Tottenham Hotspur should be more than this, and we should we should uh, we deserve better football than this, and we deserve an escape. 
And, you know, this may look stupid in a few weeks and we're back doing well, winning games or whatever. And I'll own up to that. But I don't know if there's a long-term future here for Jose. There, I said it. And uh, that's it. That's it for this video. I don't even know how long I've been going. I've been ranting for forever. Jesus Christ. Okay, well... If you're still here, congrats on you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. The best part about supporting Tottenham is all the people I've met along the way. I will always say that I love the supporter base. I love everything about this club, and that's why I'm doing this. And you know, I. Uh, I'm still, I still love all the players. I still love the team. I still love watching the team. It's just hard to see them like this. There seem to be no ideas. There seem, it does remind me of the end of the Pochettino era with how players are playing. And I really hope we pick it up for Chelsea. I don't know. We will, we will have to see. Anyways. That's going to be it for this video. It's one of the longest videos I've ever done. But I think it needed to be done just to explain my frustration. Uh, uh, one other thing. Someone asked me in the other video, you know, Jose hasn't gotten enough time for, uh, for, uh, for us to be criticizing him like this. Yeah, it's been a difficult pandemic and, and stuff, but... I think he's had the time, he's had the investment, um, this should be one of his best seasons statistically under management, and I haven't been seeing a lot, and if anything, I'm seeing the problems that were happening at Manchester United pop up a lot sooner, and I want to prevent that from happening uh, with our club, and that's what I'll say, and that's uh, that's where I'll leave it. Um, and again, if things start going well again, I'll own up to it and I'll be like, I'm stupid for wanting Jose gone. Uh, but that's where I am. I don't need to defend myself. That's just my opinion. And you can have your opinion as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm frustrated because I feel like we can do better. And that's all I want. That's all everyone wants. If that to you is backing Jose and being with him all the way, you know, props on you. And hopefully you're right, because then we won't have to spend a lot of money sacking him in the summer. But uh, I really, I just really want to see progress. And we, we will see where that comes from. Maybe this is a big overreaction again, but <laughs> I just need to end this. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know your, uh, your thoughts down in the comments. I want to see what you guys are thinking as well. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys next time. See ya.